Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. It doesn't feel like a week ago we were back in here, but it is. So we're back on the quick change tool post again this week. I'm hoping by the end of today's video we're going to have the main body part of the quick change tool post done. So in last week's video we basically bored out the centre to get that to a 40mm hole and we started taking chunks out of the side ready for the dovetails. Well, this week we're back over on the mill. The majority of today's work is going to be on the mill because I want to get both the dovetails done. I want to get the hole drilled out ready for the piston that's going to be going in there which will be locking our tool holders. And given enough time, I want to go around and give a generous chamfer to all the edges just to give this tool post a slightly nicer feeling and look. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Hope you guys enjoy this. If you do, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free, doesn't cost anything, and you just keep up to date on the projects that we've got in, going on in the shop. But, let's head over to the mill. Over on the mill then, we're all ready to start cutting our dovetails. This is the first time I've ever cut a dovetail on the mill, so I'm just gonna use a bit of common sense and try getting this as even as possible. Just to quickly talk you through how I've set this up then, I've basically dropped the dovetail down all the way until it just touches off on the flat part of my material here. I've then locked the z-axis on the quill, so that now is going to stay in that height position throughout this whole entire cut. I've then touched off on this very inner edge here and I've zeroed my DRO and the plan is from this zero point now I'm going to be moving into the work five millimeters and then the same when we come to this side keep the z-axis as it is touch off and then move in this way five millimeters and hopefully by doing that we're going to get a nice uniform dovetail with a slight lip here so it shouldn't chip off if i ever hit this in the future so i've zeroed off i'm just going to take a light pass now just to clean up any high spots there shouldn't really be any And start off with then, let's do really small increments of, I don't know, let's do 0.2 millimetres. We'll see how that goes. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever cut any dovetails. So I need to work out really what this mill and what these cutters are capable of in terms of depths of cut. Let's go up to 0.5 mil now. So that'll be a 0.3 depth of cut. See how that copes. Seems to be cutting not too bad. I'll check back in with you guys in a minute and we'll see how this is getting on. Uh. 
Would you look at that? That's a pretty respectable dovetail, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, I've got to admit, that went pretty smoothly. I was quite surprised how nice that was to actually machine. Um, no real major issues. Kept the depths of cut down to quite a minimal. I think I maxed out at maybe 0.4mm depth of cut with the dovetail. But yeah, I'm happy with that. So I've just got to repeat that on the other side. And then once I've done that, I think we'll head over to the bench and evaluate what the part looks like. Because so far, so good. Right then, we've got both our sides now cut for our dovetail. And I was really happy with how that turned out. So much so, if you put this block now next to the 3D printed one, they're pretty much identical. The metal dovetail is a slight bit wider than the 3D printed one, but overall, these are almost identical parts. So I didn't really need to take this out of the vise, I just took it out to show you guys a comparison. Now we've got the dovetail cut into that. Next thing I'm going to do now is chuck this back in the vise and we're going to drill out and bore this hole to 20 millimeters, ready for the ready for the piston part to go in. So it's not going to be a 3D printed part I'm putting in here. I'm going to make a brass piston to go in here. But just for demonstration purposes, this is sort of what it's going to look like dimension wise when it's finished. So I'm going to go carry on with that bring you guys over with me and we'll see how well this goes drilling this out and reaming it to 20 millimeters Just finishing off this final size hole then, and this is our 20 mil drill bit. Running the mill, really slow, 170 RPM this is. So it turns out I don't actually have a 20 mil reamer. So this is gonna have to do I'll obviously chamfer it and clean it all up, but unfortunately won't be able to get that perfect 20mm hole that I was hoping for. I don't think it should be too much of an issue, as long as the piston slides in there nice and easy, should be alright. Nearly there, not too far to go. That's about to go. Now, we are through. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's tight. Oh. Gonna need a C spanner on that. Two seconds. Jesus, that's got tight. There we go. Bloody never thought that was coming out. So, I haven't deburred it yet, but yeah, the piston fits in there okay. Brilliant. So, this tool post body now is almost coming together. It's pretty much finished. Um, what I want to do now, I think, I'm going to chamfer some of these edges. So I'm going to have to flip the part over and I'm probably going to put a chamfer all the way across the top section and then probably some down the sides as well. Not too sure if I'm going to chamfer these dovetail edges here. I think they'd probably be better if they were square. But we'll see how it looks in a minute when we've flipped it up.
Going to start off then by putting a chamfer on this edge here. And what I found myself using quite a lot in the workshop are these countersunk sort of, they're not drill bits, they're just sort of boring tips. Um, let's see if you can see that there. They're import ones, you normally get a multi-pack for about £10. And I actually find them really good. They're the sort of thing that, because they're so cheap, once they dull out or break, you can just throw them away. So, I'm going to start with this. Not too sure how deep I'm going to do this chamfer. I'm just going to sort of gauge it by how it looks and then do all the others to the same sort of depth. So, let's do this. Du, 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 du. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the mill, touch off on it, zero off my DRO and just take some light passes. See what this tool's made of. There we go. Touched off there. Zero that out. And what should we start with? Start with a 0.2mm depth of cut. Helps I go the right way. Do that again. So yeah, I'm not too sure if this is the right way of doing it, or the right tool should I say. But it doesn't give a bad finish. And it gives the type of chamfer that I'm after. So yeah, not too bad. Alright, that was surprisingly easy. Let's step it up to 0.3. See how that goes. Seems to do that quite easy, so... Let's go up even more. Yeah, this goes. That's not looking too bad. I don't want a massive chamfer on this, I just want something a little bit subtle. So, seems to be working a treat. I think a one millimetre chamfer will probably do there, I think. Nice. But right, I'm going to do the other edge and when we come back, we'll put a chamfer on the top. Those chamfers then at one millimetre turned out really well, so I think I'm going to stick with that for the top section here. I think I can push these cutters a little bit more than what I have been. So I'm going to do a 0.5mm depth of cut on this first one. Just that way we can get away with just doing two passes along each edge. The cutter seems to be handling that okay. So I think I'm going to stick to that. Just whiz around this now and clean all these shoulders up, giving them a nice chamfer.
Wow, that's cleaned up nice. So I'm really impressed how this has turned out. After giving it a rub down with some wet and dry sandpaper, this thing's turned out really nice. The surface finish on that is amazing. There's a few little swell marks from the tool that I was using, but for a quick change tool post, that's brilliant. And I know we've done it before, but comparing it like to like to the CAD one or the 3D printed one, should I say, this thing's turned out really well. For now then guys, that sums up the quick change tool post body. That's all done, we can put that to rest and move on to the next thing we're going to be making. So the next part I think I'm going to do is the camshaft, the eccentric shaft that pushes the piston in and out. This shouldn't be too complicated of a build, fingers crossed. I should be able to get all this done in one video, so that's going to be the next one lined up in the Quick Change Tool Post series. But next week, I've got something exciting coming. It's my birthday, managed to blag this as a birthday present, so stay tuned because next week we've got another new bit of equipment coming into the workshop. A new machine that's going to help prototyping and designing stuff like this quick change tool post really easy and convenient. So stay tuned for then. Other than that, that sums up today's video. Thank you again to the sponsor, Steel City Gav. Couldn't have probably done this so soon without you. So really appreciate the metal you sent me and if you haven't checked them out guys, head over there, link's in the description. But that's it then, see you next week where we'll be revealing the really cool and new bit of equipment on the channel. Have a good week guys, happy machining.